Okay, first of all, we have three different systems here, one in the left, middle, right, and they each perform a specific function. The first one is the stack magazine. It's holding the, the parts that are eventually going to be distributed. The second, the middle one, is called the joining system. It's going to join the part with the cap. And then the third one, the one over on the right, has three chutes. One where the part either goes down international, national, or gets rejected. And it's positioned to the correct chute with these two actuators here. And they're electrically controlled. They don't happen to be pneumatic, they're electrically controlled. And as well in the system, you'll see these three boxes. One here, one in the middle, and one on the left. And if everything's working okay, there's actually a green light that's on in the top of the box. And those boxes are used to control the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt can be stopped, reversed, or in a forward position. And at the same time, while we're looking at the system here, you can see that these are the devices that either read RFD codes or write RFD codes. And they're used to position it down the, the correct chute. Now, the communications for all of those RF devices are used, uh, have industrial communications. And you can see that these boxes here are the communications for all of that RF device. And it eventually gets back to the computer through an Ethernet controller. And that's the way all of those things are sending its information back to the computer. Now, the next part I want to show you has to do with the arrangement of the keys, the push buttons, and how you reset and clear everything. So I'm going to start off with everything off. Okay. And uh, if you look over in the back, you'll see that the yellow and red light are turned on right now. So that's an indication that the system is not ready to perform any particular tasks. Now, generally, I found it works the best if you reset the system starting on the right-hand side, moving towards the left-hand side. And note how these are connected together. That's kind of important as well, uh, <clears throat> the black and the blue wires. But we're going to start off with the... Uh, keys in a horizontal position and starting from the right hand side I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to press the reset button. You actually may hear a pneumatic sound or a belt turning but it's resetting the, that particular station. So I press reset and yeah I heard a, a solenoid change and then I'm going to bring the key up to the upward position or vertical and then press the start button. So that station is now ready. Moving on to the middle station you're going to make sure that that button is pulled out, press the reset button, and you can hear that uh, a belt turn for a few seconds, it's just kind of initializing everything. Bring the, the key switch to the vertical position, press the start button, and that system is ready. And now finally over on the third system, the push button was released, brought outwards. The reset is indicating as uh, being ready, press it bring the key to that position and then press the reset and there was already an order in the system so normally the, the light would have flashed green everything seems to be working as it should it's putting a cap on the red sometimes it gets stuck right here so you have to move this along and that one didn't work out so well but that's that's okay and those are the, when you see the RFID lights flashing, it's an indication that it's either reading or writing at that particular time. Okay, be aware of, of how these three systems are interconnected together with that black and blue wire. And down all the way to the bottom is the Siemens PLC. It's an S7-1500 semantic PLC. And that's what's running the, the process. And actually, you see all of the lights on there, up on the, the PLC, you'll see a bunch of lights. Those lights indicate the status of the inputs and the outputs. And there's an analog module as well. Make sure that the power is on, make sure that those two cables are connected. A blue light comes on for the power. And there's another separate cable for the 24 volt supply. That needs to be plugged in as well. Now we're also gonna go around to the back to have a look at some of the connections in the back. We're going to look at all the different systems in the back. You can see that basically there are different controllers up on the top shelf and on the very right hand side is the computer. 
as the computer is connected to the mouse and the monitor and the uh, keyboard and it's running that software that is the industry 4.0 that's controlling each of those three PLCs independently. So you have one PC program communicating with three programmable logic controllers and all of the hardware is in the back. So you want to make sure the power is on, all the lights that should be on and down at the floor, it's kind of messy, but those are all the pneumatic connections. And that metal box is actually the uh, pneumatics distribution connection point. So about 60 PSI or 6 PSI comes into the system. It's regulated with three regulators on the panel, but that's just a distribution unit. Okay, this is, a, this is called an Industry 4.0 system and it's used to study mechatronics and there are many sensors and actuators on this system. And we're going to look at the software configuration first of all. So you have to run this mini MES communications tool first and it's critical that all of these four blue check marks are blue. I think they're grayed out when they're not active but they all have to be blue. And to get it to work, you usually have to do a, a refresh. So there is a, a button here, up here. And I believe if you click on these buttons too. But in the final, when you complete everything, you have to make sure that these four buttons are in blue. These two other boxes here indicate the string that's applied to the RFID sensor that's inside the object as it's moving along the conveyor belt. One of these boxes indicates the string it's reading and the other box indicates the string it's outputting. So it's worth monitoring those as you're working with the system. Once you've got all of that set up, then you're gonna to move to the second screen, which allows you to configure the system, the product, and the order. And there's also order history, but that's not really required for this system. The other thing that you must do before any of that actually, is the system configuration. And this particular system has three stations. One of the stations is called the stack magazine and that's where the parts are held. The second one is called the joining system and that's where the cap is placed on top of the object and it uses uh, pneumatics to do that. And then the third system is called sorting and that's to either apply the part to national distribution, international distribution, or rejecting it through the third um, slot that it can go down. So you have to set that up by clicking um, stack first, join second, and sorting third. And it tells you in this box that there are three systems. And you also want to make sure before moving any further that these three boxes are blue. Um, they're partly used for communications. If they're not highlighted, the system won't work. The next tab is to set up what you want to do with each part. And you can see I have um, different programs here, release red, release black, and so on. And you give each of those a name. So the first one here is called red cap CCID. And it has three steps. It releases the red workpiece from the holding station. It mounts a cap and there's an abbreviation for each of those commands and you actually see that inside the RFID. So release the workpiece, mount the cap, check the color, you're really just verifying the color, and then in this case it's going to send it down the center slot which is the international distribution. And there's a code for each of these things. So I think, I think you can uh, just go by the code here, this is release red, so RR mount cap MC, check color is CC, and then um, SI, I guess the second letter there refers to international. So I had one for the black, one for the red, and one for um, other functions as well. So those are the names, but you set that up one time and you're going to use that information in the order management. So the last part is the order management, and you can see these are all the available products and I've chosen to go with a, a red cap. So it's red cap, check color and international. And then the second one is a black part, put a cap on it, check its color and then send it down to international. The third one actually doesn't check the color. It's a red part, 
So I don't think it would matter with this one because it's not checking the color. It's not going to place a part on it and it's going to go down through the national. One kind of unique and tricky thing with the software as well is if you want to remove one of the previous orders because it won't work until you remove a previous order, you have, actually have to select the order number in this box and then do subtract or minus and then that order goes away. And then to automatically begin the process, you're going to be clicking on the plus symbol and that will automatically start the system. I hope that helps and uh, for, for all of this to work, you actually have to attach a keyboard and a, a mouse to the two USB ports and there are extra USB ports in the back of the computer. All right, what I'm going to show you right now is how to set up all of the parts to be able to run through the process that we just did with the software. And you can see that there are three chutes here, national, international, and the third chute is kind of a, a reject chute. And oats, each of those things is controlled by an actuator arm. It's pneumatically controlled right here. And this will open or close with a pneumatic signal that's coming from the computer that decides which of these chutes it will go down. Now I'm going to first of all place three caps in this area. So one, two, three. Now we really only need two for this process. And try to line them up in the center. It'll make it less likely that the caps will jam when they're putting on. Another sensor that you see in this system here is an optical sensor. It's an infrared beam that's shooting down to the cap, reflecting back up. And all that's doing is verifying that there's a cap there. Because you don't want to start the process without having that cap. The other thing that's very important is that inside each of these little modules is a RFID. And you want to put it so the F RFID is sitting near the top, not upside down like this. And it's actually a little metal disc in the middle. And I have three of them, a red, a black, and a second red. And you have to put them down this chute, okay, the red one first, based on my programming, black one second and then a red one third. There's actually an optical sensor down there as well. Now while I'm here, let me point out a, a few sensors. All right, coming around to this side, we have some components that I want to look at. First of all, this is the holder for the parts, and I have three parts in here, a red, a black, and another red. And each of those has the RFID built, uh, built in that stack. The second thing is this system is able to detect whether the part is actually present because it uses something called an, uh, a through beam sensor. So there's an emitter on this side and a detector on that side and the only way it'll be blocked is if there's an actual part in there. The other thing that will happen is as the system is actuated there's actually a pneumatic cylinder here that gets extended and retracted to push the part onto the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt begins and then what happens is this first device, this is actually called an RF writer, a radio frequency writer, and the RFID sensor has a code written to it. And the code tells the device, do we go to international, am I red in color, and do I need to put a cap on the device? So it has all of that information stored in the RFID. And so as it moves through the conveyor belt system, it, the second one reads it to determine whether it requires a cap or not and then the next one is verifying uh, whether actually this one is verifying if the color is red black or translucent so all of that information is embedded embedded into the RFRD okay as we move along to this center position we have this part here and a holder for our caps and actually I turn this on because of the light detection so it's holding the caps and the RFID will read whether or not a cap is required. And then what happens is that there are actually two actuators here. One that moves this arm in and out, so a horizontal actuator, and one that moves this part up and down, a vertical actuator. As well, we have a uh, pneumatic system here that's going to pick up the part and move it back uh, so that we put a lid onto the object. But it's made up of a couple of things here. It has a, a Venturi effect device, which basically is converting 
the compressed air to a vacuum so that we don't have to have a separate vacuum pump. And that's a really great feature. But the second thing that happens here, and you may see it when it's operating, is that there's an ascens a sensor. And I know that there's a sensor there because there's an electrical wire. And that sensor is detecting whether or not there's a vacuum because if you try to pick up the part and you don't sense the vacuum, you don't want to move it any further. So once it's done that, so you're going to see this actuator move across, uh, bring the vacuum suction device down to the cover, back towards the part, and it's being held in place because this pneumatic gate is help holding it there, and then it moves to the next stage. And in the next stage, it's going to read whether the part is expected to go down the national chute, international chute, or be rejected down the third chute, possibly if the color is incorrect.